there's me being very Canadian. And, and I think my t-shirt says a whole lot of fun stuff about that piece today. I see Angela's joining us. Hello, Marie Laren, Dubai. Mm -hmm. Always beautiful, wonderful to see a beautiful face. I've got, and I know it's Angela's joining us in here. I was just pouring some of her maple syrup. And um, so as we're starting up and we're getting, could you believe this is week 62? And we get a little excited because we're going to be starting to have topics that'll come up. So a little bit recipes from the year before and different pieces like that. But one of the things about this weekend, we were just sharing with the group as everybody was coming in, is it's Thanksgiving weekend in Canada, which is very, very exciting. So we have a lot of different celebrations going on around, especially around Atlantic Canada. And, you know, turkeys and chickens, those are a big deal. That's what everybody is always looking at what's what what are they eating and what's going on and we love to share food uh nicola our academic director often calls this eating season so there's the, the fall harvest is really spectacular and Rosalind and i were sharing our journey yesterday started uh, at the hillsville farmers market which my mother and i go every single sunday morning and uh during from may through until thanksgiving weekend and um, it's where we spend time, you know, really getting our local produce. We've got our beautiful fresh carrots that are here. Those are from Angela. We've got our potatoes all mashed up, ready for our Thanksgiving dinner. But we were saying for our guests from away that the markets, some of our markets are seasonal, but over in our Moncton and in our area, the Moncton and the Dieppe market ready around. So the following week, we'll still be able to go visit and get all of our fresh produce. We're just gonna be going to a different location, but we love that they support the regional areas. And the two breweries that we're working with today, um, Angela does some partnerships and some things with them as well. So I know Holy Whale, she's down on the 114. So if you look it up on a map, she's just down going towards Funday National Park near the rocks. So I know I can see Roz, the steam coming out of Roz's kitchen right now, which is always exciting. So let's talk about some menu. And as we talk about our menu, we're gonna, we're gonna share a little bit more about our journey to Holy Whale and to the tire shack yesterday, and obviously to the market. And, and that's really part of our journey. I know Jacqueline's been doing her local shopping now down in Lunenburg and Mahone Bay and at the Bridgewater Market. Richard's in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. And of course our school's in the beautiful Lunenburg, but he frequents and he's got a brewery really close to his home in Liverpool. I haven't had a chance to go, but he and Rosalind have. So he's going to share a little bit. About, there we go. I love how close your fridge is to everything you're doing, Richard. <laughs> he's got that beautiful IPA. So fantastic. So one of the things in our future, you're going to see a beer club come out. So stay tuned later in November. We're going to be starting to spend a bit more time really helping any of you and our students experience what's going on and what is happening. So six recipes, here's what's going on today for pizza and beer day. And again, it's been inspired because yesterday, October 9th was International Pizza and Beer Day. Well, listen, it's Thanksgiving weekend. So of course, you know what I'm gonna make? I'm gonna make a Thanksgiving pizza. And I've always loved a perfect bite. Do you know when you get all the things on your plate, and they're all in the one bite and it just tastes really great. So we're gonna turn what would be your traditional Canadian Thanksgiving dinner, we're gonna turn that into a pizza. So very excited about that. We're gonna do an incredible dessert pizza because pumpkin pie is a very, very important thing around here. And I'm just looking, I have a variety of different types of pumpkins and squash here. Um, I will tell you the pumpkins that I've used today in the making of this, were pumpkins that I grew in my garden. So I'm really excited about that. I didn't have as much of a harvest as I would have liked to have. And mom, I'll get you to bring one of those little ones over. These were all little baby sweet pumpkins. And I'm gonna say this because the pumpkin puree that I made, oh, you can just bring the little one. Um, so the pumpkins that I use are all around this side. Come on here, mom. We're all around this size. And you'll see this one that she has no bigger than that. Most, Perfect. You'll, you'll get big pumpkins like this. So we use those smaller sweet ones. Thanks, mom, to get this and because they um, puree really well. So we're going to have this great pumpkin dessert pizza, uh, breakfast pizza, because mom and I always like to eat breakfast. So, and I love a good breakfast pizza. We're going to spice that up with some of Scott's 
original hot sauce, or you can use the Ghost or Reaper if you would really prefer. But come the morning, I think I'm going to start off with the original sauce and work my way up. And then Rosalind's got some incredible chicken pesto and a few other mini pizzas, which I love about here. There's the mom coming out of her with kids that always wanted something different to eat. And some beautiful sauce that comes from her heart and her home that she's going to be sharing with us. Richard went vegetarian and Anitra didn't know she sneaked something in there that I didn't know about. But he's going to bring us more of a Mediterranean flared type of pizza with some olives, pineapple, and paired with his beer. And then Jacqueline has got a traditional beef pizza, which we're so excited because she's a week of the seven in, from Vietnam, now here in Canada. And she's exploring her fusion food using some of her spices and flavors with a little bit more of our Atlantic Canadian. So Jacqueline, we can't wait to see what else you're cooking. We're getting really excited with that. So I'm going to layer in a little bit of what's going on with my dessert. I'm going to take a sip of my beautiful chicory chai tea. Angela, thank you so much. This is one of my favorite teas. What I love about it is it tastes like fall. It feels like fall. And this is the tea that I use um, on our dessert pizza. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I have one little piece step of that pizza I'm going to do first. And then I'm going to go over and talk to Rosalind. We're going to see what's cooking in her kitchen. Um, so this chicory chai tea, I'm going to read you what's in the ingredients of it. Because what I did is I steeped a big pot of it. And then I cooked my pumpkin in the steeped tea. So it really infused those wonderful flavors, those, uh, those pumpkin pie spice flavors. I'm gonna be looking over at Joan and Maureen for nods. Bum said the same thing, but that's what. So I cut my pumpkin up and I cooked it in the tea. And remember I'm making a puree so I didn't throw any of the liquid out. So I cooked, I used three, three cups of tea and I used four cups of pumpkin. So, but you let that simmer down and cook down. The only other things I added to that, which of course is a little bit of maple syrup. This is Angela's dark sheet maple syrup. It's one of my favorites. I like the richer maple place flavor that maple gives you. So that went in there with a little bit of honey. Cooked that through. I added an extra bit of pumpkin, or sorry, I'm saying pumpkin spice and that's not what it is, um, cinnamon. So really it has the tea maple syrup and cinnamon with the pumpkin and it was cooked down. And that's what I pureed. And you're gonna see how beautiful this looks. So it's a chicory chai. And you can see, which I love, she has these little windows in there, how pretty the tea is. But this is what's in it. Chicory root, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, nutmeg, cardamom, carob, and peppercorns. And that is very much a fall flavor piece. And a lot of people that might make a pumpkin pie spice would use a lot of those similar seasoning. I can tell you it infused into the pumpkin perfectly. And Angela, this is definitely one of those fall posting recipes that everybody's going to love. So here's what I did do. I have a couple of frozen peeled oranges here. So when I'm going to make this, you're going to see it afterwards. So this is one step I need to do right now. So I've got a cookie sheet. My, my cook assistant sitting over here beside me. I've got a cookie sheet here with some parchment paper on it. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna rest them on top of my two cans of Tire Shack beer. So thank you, Alan. Those are gonna be a great shelf for me right now. And then honestly, the Holy Wheel beer we could probably use as a shelf because of the size of these ones. Not complaining, Jeff. We'll be very much enjoying those later today. So I peeled an orange and then I froze it for about 35 minutes. So it's hard. And the reason why I've done this is I'm going to cut it. Now I want to cut it so I see all the beautiful wheels. So make sure you cut it in on the end. And I'm going to show you in just a second what that's going to look like. So this is a really neat topping because remember today's pizza. So I'm not making pumpkin pie. I'm making pumpkin pie pizza. And so we've infused that together. So I want to have, when I serve that tonight for Thanksgiving dinner for Mom and I, I can deliver this to some friends to make sure that we do get to share this with a few other people. These wheels that I'm going to show you in just a second as I get them cut, I have to cut them when they're frozen. So I couldn't pre-cut them. 
they're going to be going into the oven after I brush them with some maple syrup. But I want to show you whoo, how perfectly. So I'm going to help perfect, perfectly or perfect, Richard. I want to see. Sometimes I say it right. Sometimes I say it wrong. You're usually there to grab me. So we're going to cut all these up, lay them on, and I'm going to brush them. And what I'm using is, thank you, Mom. I've just got a little bowl with a bit of the dark maple syrup in it. And I'm going to brush each one of these oranges with a little bit of maple syrup just on that one side. And I'm going to put those in the oven and we're going to let those cook and we're going to let them candy up. So I'm going to put them in a 375 degree oven and I'm going to pop those in. It's a tasty recipe to do finger licking good. So we're going to fill this tray. So you can imagine when I do the pumpkin pizza, I'm going to place those all around it. So they're going to look like pepperoni. That's what a little bit of the secret is. So while I finish getting these cut up and getting them into the oven, Rosalind, would you like to tell us what's going on in your kitchen this morning? Thanks, Michelle. I had the pleasure of having Michelle's uh, uh, dessert pizza. It is amazing. So I am so envious, Michelle, because <laughs> they're so delicious. So as Michelle said, I have three children. So of course, everybody doesn't like the same thing on their pizzas. So what I would do is I would have a, um, I would go to the store and get some man bread. So it's already cooked, so it doesn't take long. Uh, so if the kids come home from school or if you're hungry and you're getting home from work and you want something that's really quick and easy, the breads are the, the pizza portion, the, the dough portion is already cooked. So it doesn't take long, about 10 minutes in the oven once it goes. So I picked up a roasted garlic naan bread as well as a caramelized onion. So I'm going to do three separate ones and they're all going to be a little bit different. So I made, uh, I grew some Vietnamese basil uh, this year and I made a pesto. So this particular pesto has peanuts in it, a, um, some uh, fish sauce uh, and sesame oil and the, um, um, the Vietnamese uh, basil. So the leaves are a little different than the normal and they grow a little differently. So I'm gonna use the Vietnamese pesto on the uh, caramelized onion. And what I'm doing is I'm spreading the pesto because I am going to make this one with shrimp. So I spread the pesto on the pizza, the naan bread, and then I'm just, I, I don't cook my shrimp because shrimp only takes a few minutes to cook. And if you cook it, if they become too hard. So these, this one I would cook separately. Um, I, slice them in half so they're thin, they cook quite quickly. And then I put the shrimp on it. I do a little bit of green onion on this one as well with, uh, my mother gave me some cherry tomatoes. I'm putting some cherry tomatoes on there. And I'm also going to put a little bit of um, Thai, I'm uh, sorry, Vietnamese uh, basil leaves on it. And then I am going to put, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of cheddar cheese just on top, just to give it a little bit of flavor. So that's one of my pizzas. So the second pizza that I'm going to make is I'm going to make a, I also made regular pesto. So this one has um, uh, garlic. Oh, sorry. I, I did put garlic in the both pestos. <laughs> so this one has garlic, regular basil, and olive oil instead and this one i am going to put i'm going to make a chicken pesto pizza this one this time so this one is um it's going to have a uh, chicken i did uh, cook the chicken portion uh, sliced it thinly and then i cooked it up a, a little bit because I, I don't trust the chicken will be cooked in 10 minutes so i cut it up and i put pieces of chicken all the way around like i did with the shrimp and then with this, I put a um, little bit of spinach on top, just rip it up a little bit. And I'm putting some mushrooms. I slice them very thinly so they, that again cooks quickly. And then I, with this one, I'm putting sun-dried tomatoes. 
on top. So I have spinach, mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes, chicken, and homemade uh, basil pesto. And of course, I got to drizzle the olive oil over that. And on this one, I'm going to put Parmesan cheese on top. And again, it's very thinly. So it's just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of flavor. And so the last one, my mother gave me, and you can tell it was very good because this is all I have left. So my mother made a homemade pizza sauce. So I'm going to use the pizza sauce from my mom gave me. And it smells delicious. It has some onions. It has uh, tomatoes ripe out of our garden. And it has we get some green peppers, some red peppers. And it is so delicious. And I'm going to have to go home and get some more. But that's besides the point. All right. So I spread that one around again. So now this one's a little bit more of a tomato sauce. So this one I'm putting... Uh, um, Italian sausage, hot Italian sausage. Again, I did not cook the sausage because I've made, I've taken it out of the casing and there's small bits of sausage. So I know that it's going to be cooked in time. So I'm going to put the sausage on there. I have uh, mushrooms for this one as well around the pizza. And then I have, I am also putting on some regular onions on top and I'm putting some uh, banana pepper because I do like some spice on top as well. And then I am going to add, again, you can put whatever you like on your pizzas. Sometimes I put um, uh, different things. Uh, I, this one, I'm also gonna put some capers on top. So the, and the capers are gonna go on top. They're a little salty, so this, it'll go great with the Italian sausage. And these capers came from a friend of mine that owns a restaurant in, in uh, St. John called Italian by Night. And it is straight from Italy. So they are amazing capers. So then I'm putting the sausage on top as well with a little bit more onion. And this one, I'm going to add a few cherry tomatoes again because it's so good, those cherry tomatoes that my mom gave me. And... This one, I'm gonna put a little bit more, I'm gonna put cheddar as well as uh, Parmesan cheese, a little bit of both. I often put feta cheese on it and uh, some black olives is another thing that I love to put on my pizzas. So here we go. So now you shall see that each one is a little bit different. Let me see if I can get this so you can see it. Each one's a little bit different and they all cook individually. So this one is the one with this sausage, the hot Italian sausage and banana peppers. This one is, has the sun-dried tomatoes, the uh, spinach, the chicken, the mushrooms and uh, the regular pesto. And this one is the shrimp uh, Viennese uh, pesto with tomatoes and uh, green onions and uh, some extra basil, Vietnamese basil. And that is the three pizzas that I make. Again, you can put whatever you like. Now this, luckily, when Michelle and I were going, just one second, let me wash my hands. Luckily, yesterday, when Michelle and I were going out, we were speaking with the brewmasters. So when we were talking with the shack, tire shack, Alan, who owns the tire shack, he recommended this IPA. It's called, I love the way that he, he's done, <laughs> the way he names his beer is amazing. So this one's called Parts and Labor. So he, he does, so he took, he did a play on because he is in a tire, it was a tire shack. Uh, so he has, does a play on all of his beers to, to represent the, that type of an industry. So this one he recommended with the pesto because of all the herbs and, the, and, the, and that beautiful flavor. So he recommended this one and I tasted it yesterday and he's perfectly bang on because it was going to be delicious. And then when we were speaking with the Holy Whale, they recommended this one, the cool, cool boy. And that's going to go with the, um, with the uh, tomato based pizza. So it's really nice that it's a, luckily we had a beer and pizza international day yesterday. So I'm really looking forward to it. My son's coming home for Thanksgiving dinner. This is going to be a lunch when he arrives and then we'll have Thanksgiving tonight. So I'm really excited about eating these. I'm not going to cook them right now. Actually, I am. I'm going to throw them in. I'll show you what they look like at the end. 
Anyway, I'm all ready whenever you're ready. Anyone have any questions? Looks wonderful. Thank you. Roslyn, those look delicious. Thanks, Michelle. Absolutely. So I'm using a different crust on mine today. So I eat gluten-free and it's, um, it's a good health choice, but uh, I have an allergy. So, so for mine, it's a little bit more of an issue. So one of the things I've discovered, you don't often see me hold up a package good, but you're gonna today. So I'd like to thank the Molina company for making a gluten-free cauliflower pizza crust. Wonderful. It is uh, Costco, Jacqueline, it's the only place that we can get them. Um, I think it's $8 for the two crusts, so really they're 12 inch, it's a really good price. Inside the kit does come with it, it actually comes with a sauce. I'm not using that, I make my own. I'll probably dump those into some chili or something that I'm making. I definitely make sure they won't go to waste. They're very good, actually. We do use them quite frequently, right? Quick away. Um, as long as it's hot. So mom's getting the eggs scrambled up to get one of the, and the eggs are gonna be partly scrambled. So we're gonna start our breakfast pizza. I'm using the cauliflower crust. The Thanksgiving pizza you're gonna see, I'm gonna use a zucchini crust. These are absolutely incredible. And I have to say, here's the crust. <laughs> so not only is it already great, look at that. It's already been partly prepared and then very healthy, good ingredients in this. There's not a lot of preservatives, but just enough to make a difference. Look at that, it even looks like it's already perfectly cooked. So look up some, that's going in the pan. So, Usually you'll see a little bit more mess and I see Jacqueline smiling, that is an easy one. So this is a breakfast pizza. I've made a similar pizza before, I'm spicing it up. This pizza is dedicated um, for Scott, for Scott Milburn. It's gonna be a spicy pizza. So we're gonna be pairing that with the Hell's Yeah Oktoberfest. His good friend, Alan, from the Tire Shack had immediately made the um, recommendation for this. And the reason what he said it is the spiciness with the pizza, and then there's gonna be some meat and stuff in the pizza. He said, basically the clean of this beer will cut that. So um, by the time after this, mom and I are sitting down, I may have a little bit of a tiny taste with my breakfast pizza of this breakfast beer. But it sounds funny because it's called Hell's Yeah. And you'll often hear people crack in Atlanta County, you hear a lot of saying, someone's like, is that a good idea? Hell's Yeah, that's a good idea. So, we ended up saying it a lot more yesterday than we thought. Again, and I'm going to say to Roz, really super cool job that they do on those labels. And it's their Oktoberfest beer, and it's October. So celebrating the festival here. So, I heard you say hell yeah yesterday, and I wanted to correct you. It's actually hell's yeah, not yeah, no, yeah, hell's yeah. Hell's yeah, <laughs> with an S. Exactly, right? So very excited about that. So here's what we've got going on for the base of this. I would like to put pizza into everybody's world. I think pizza, tacos, and wraps. Just stir more. it up a little bit more. Very little more. Did you, I don't think there's more oil on that. How much should be sticking? Okay. So we're trying to get our eggs not to stick to the pan for some particular reason. The eggs are sticking to the pan. So what I have in this bowl is one cup of ricotta cheese. And I don't usually eat a lot of dairy. Ricotta's not too bad. I won't eat it with a lot. So a really nice ricotta. I use a light ricotta. And a ricotta cheese is a very thin and creamy cheese. Very much used a lot in Italian cooking. Um, love this cheese. And so I, no, no, no. Okay, just set it over here, please. Sorry guys, not ready for the eggs. The mom keeps trying to give me the eggs. Little ahead of it, my sous chef's ahead of me. So we've got a cup of ricotta in here. And on top of this, I put a quarter of a cup of fresh chives. So when we were seeing Angela yesterday, from Funny Farms. We're really excited. She had these beautiful fresh green onions grown in her greenhouse, probably outside for these ones still. Um, but so you'll see that it looks pretty. You can see all the pretty chives in there. So right now I wanna know there's only two ingredients that have gone in. I'm gonna put a little bit, I'm not gonna put salt in this because ricotta is a little salty and some of the ingredients I have on it are already gonna have a little bit of salt. We put a little salt and pepper in the eggs when we cook them too. So I am going to put it fresh, some fresh cracked pepper. 
I like pepper, so there's gonna be a couple of extra cracks in there. But what I'm gonna put in here is two tablespoons of Scott sauce. So obviously that really pretty white color is about to change uh, because we're gonna mix that beautiful sauce in there. Should get a picture of that, mom. So this is what it's gonna look like just before we give this a nice stir in. Um, see, now mom wants to get a picture. Oh, yeah. Okay, so watch that color change. So it's actually gonna end up looking a little bit more orange or red like a pizza sauce. This is gonna be the base for our breakfast pizza. So this is gonna go down. I'm gonna put this on and we're gonna build this pizza. That smells absolutely delicious, by the way. What I like about it is the fresh chive in there really does give the whole recipe a bit of a boost. And it gives this, and especially when you're eating it, this doesn't need to cook in the oven long. It's probably gonna cook about 25 minutes. So really great thing, you see? I'm just gonna spread that evenly across that. And yes, I have done this before. So I do know that that ratio is measured well. So a cup of ricotta, three tablespoons of this. By the way, that buffalo sauce that Scott makes, we were talking about that earlier. Angela's growing peppers for him and many other producers around here. He needs a lot of peppers. And Jacqueline and her family have completely fallen in love with it. And I'm sure your son will be taking some home to Toronto and we'll have another fan in Ontario built up for this. So there's the lovely base. I'm not going to be able to put this over for the rest of them as much. So mom, I'll take those scrambled eggs. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build, just one second, we're going to build this. So I fried up some nice bacon. This sausage that's here, really delicious. Beautiful October sausages from Ernie. I smoked them yesterday when I cooked the chicken and the turkey, which I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. So these sausages were actually smoked from the smoker. It's gonna add an extra layer of tastiness. So I'm gonna, just like a typical pizza, I'm gonna put these beautiful ingredients across. So I've got some of that really nice sausage. And I've got some cooked bacon. Now the bacon I made sure is cooked, but it's not crispy because it's gonna go into the oven and it's gonna cook a little bit more. So I don't wanna put raw, raw because it's gonna be, I don't wanna produce all that grease, right? So I really made sure I cooked the bacon enough that I get most of the grease off. Because again, you do not wanna put that raw into the oven because it will make your pizza very greasy and we wouldn't want that to happen. Thanks, Mom. I'll trade you. Get it? Yeah. So we've got some eggs here that are half scrambled. So yes, you still want them to be a little bit runny because again, so we've got, we put six eggs in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the scrambled eggs all across the pizza. And that is your egg topping. If you see here, they spread fairly evenly and easily. You do want to do it quickly because you have warm eggs and you have cold cheese on the bottom. So spread it apart carefully and you can use as many eggs as you like. On this particular 12 inch pizza, I used five eggs. It seems to work well, depending on the size of your eggs, if you've got really big fresh farm eggs or not. But depending on how much eggs your family likes, you can put as much or as little as you want. So one of the last toppings I'm gonna to put on this is, I've got some leek. Leek's one of my favorite vegetables to use. Put it on. And um, because it's like a light onion, it's not really heavy. So I like to hold this up to show there's like your little onion. So, you know, you're just jumping up in the onion family. But one of the tricks when you're using a leek, could you take this for a second? Thanks, Mom. Is you wanna make sure that you clean them properly. And I do wanna show everybody because where they're growing from the ground up, this part of it doesn't usually have any dirt, but part way up here it does. And a lot of people waste that. So one trick is when you get your leek, and I have a picture we're gonna post afterwards, Scott has of me standing at Angela's and her leeks with the stalks, when I held it up, went from here and I'm five foot six to the floor. 
So Angela, those are some pretty powerful leaks that you were growing. So I'm gonna show everybody here, look at that. Can you see the dirt? So that's nature's way of growing it up through. So I left it attached at the end. I'm gonna give this to my mom. She's gonna run that in the water this direction, which will quickly rinse all of the dirt out of the leak. And I really wanted to give that cooking tips because anybody that's using leeks, it's an important cooking tip. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. My other teacher in the group, yay. Um, because I've seen a lot of people go, oh, well, that's really dirty and I didn't, and they start cutting it and they start throwing it away. It's just a little bit of dirt, like a lot of other vegetables, but it's a really great trick to use that. And by the way, they're in, they're in the onion family. Everybody remember, you can eat this all the way to the end on a lot of these type of onions. So just take the extra time to clean it. If you don't eat it right away, what I often do is I'll chop it off because maybe it looks a little damaged. Put it in a container in your refrigerator. And when you're making soups and sauces, great flavor to throw into those soups and sauces. Thank you, mom. So now it's still attached and there's no dirt. So I'll finish cutting it through now and be able to get all of those nice pieces of the leek. And um, for those people who don't like a lot of onion, the nice thing about leek is again, it's got a really nice mild flavor. Now, this is the last ingredient I'm gonna put in our pizza. I'm gonna top our breakfast pizza off for mom and I. I'm gonna get it in the oven. So that way, look at that, it's gonna be done just as the show is over. So you all know what we're gonna be having. And thank you, mom. The other thing about the leek, when you see, I'll hold this up and I think my mother just moved some of the eggs around and made them look more perfect. Thank you, mom. Is how pretty this is gonna look. When we take it out and we serve it, I am gonna drizzle a little bit more of that beautiful buffalo sauce. Just a little bit of a drizzle on top of it because you know, life is good. So we're gonna mix that, get the top of this. And of course, a little bit of cheese on a pizza is always good, isn't it? So we're just gonna have, we've got some beautiful Swiss cheese, a very, very little bit. I can't have a lot of dairy. So on half of it, I'm gonna put a little extra for my mom because she can have dairy. But to be honest with you, we've got a little bit of the ricotta on the bottom and that's gonna bubble up through when it cooks. So you really find that it doesn't need a lot. I'm a big fan of Parmesan cheese. And because I have Parmesan in front of me grated for my next recipe, I'm just gonna put a little on that. So there we go, everybody. This will be a beautiful breakfast pizza. I'm gonna cut up some red tomatoes when I serve to have on top. So we're gonna pop that in a 375 degree oven for about 35 minutes or 30 minutes. So mom's gonna shuffle that over and I hope you enjoy a dessert pizza just as much as we enjoy a dessert pizza. So Richard, are you ready to tell us what's going on over in your kitchen? Absolutely, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Well, as Michelle mentioned earlier, I am doing olives. I like to, I have a pension for the Mediterranean, so I'm doing olives, but with pineapple. Now, pineapple is, um, it can be anathema to Italians to put on a pizza, but there's still actually a, a, a Mediterranean connection, believe it or not, because the Hawaiian recipe was invented in Canada. It was invented by a guy named Sam Panopoulos, who was a Greek immigrant, and he had a little chain of... Uh, pizza shops in Ontario in the 1960s. So he threw the pineapple on and they got really popular. Um, now, Michelle, I, I sent you a text this morning about a, about a PowerPoint. So can you put the share on for me? I opened the meeting with you. You don't need to request, Richard, it's already on. Okay, all right, all right. So yeah, when I say I chose olives and pineapple, chose is really the active word, okay? So I'm not, I, I didn't actually make it today. <laughs> But what I did is uh, I got a student to make it. One of our students at uh, the United Language Academy made it for me. Now, she, uh, <clears throat> she offered me a free pizza last Christmas, and it, uh, I, I didn't arrive until this summer. So I thought, I'm going to use that. I'm going to take her up on that when we have a pizza show. So we're just going to zoom over there, and we're going to go on a little journey. Okay, can you see the PowerPoint? Good, good, good. Okay. So 
This is uh, her name is Scarlet. This is the Scarlet Pizza Journey, and this was the lovely drive up. So as I say, I did put some work into this pizza. I had to drive up there. This is I'm on my way to New Germany, which is uh, in Lunenburg County, and there's there's a lovely bike path up there, and you can see the beautiful fall colors. This is uh, arriving in New Germany, and there she is, Scarlet. This she has her own pizza shop there. So. She doesn't like to be filmed, really. She said, one picture and that's it. <laughs> but I, I, I got one more. I managed to get one more. Um, so there's a picture of some of the pizzas on display. And I, I noticed that she's running a, a really great shop with a brisk business in and out all the time. So that's that's always a good sign for, for food. And there was a lovely there was a lovely poster there of, of children putting up. Thank you for your pizza and all this kind of stuff, which I had, which I thought was a good sign. So then, of course, I looked at the menu <clears throat> and I just said pineapple and olives. It wasn't on the menu, but she made it for me anyway, of course. <laughs> and uh, there it is. And I got a free uh, I got a free ginger ale with it as well. So it's with me now. I've just heated up. Now, I actually haven't eaten it yet. And I think hopefully this will work. I did get her to say something here. Hopefully you can hear it. Doesn't she look great? <laughs> of course she does. <laughs> Thanks so much for the pizza. And um, I'm going to send you a link. If you're up on Sunday, you can watch. We'll be highlighting your, your shop. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're welcome. Nice to see you. This is my, Chris this is my Christmas pizza, actually. It's, it's Thanksgiving, though. I finally got it. <laughs> okay. And, of course, I just wanted to put a little shout out there for anyone who's in the New Germany area. Look at this, this great lunch deal you can get at her place. All this plus a pop or a water, everything. And then I had a nice, a nice lovely drive on the way home. It was a great day out. So you can see I put a lot of work into this pizza. Um, so <laughs> it's in the oven now. Now I did actually add, I did actually add some peppers as you can see here uh, when I was eating it up this morning and a little bit of extra cheese, why not? So here it is. And this is my breakfast pizza. Now, as far as I'm concerned, anything you eat for breakfast with pizza is just a breakfast pizza. And a good, a good uh, judgment of a pizza is how good it tastes when you reheat it, right? So there we go. Bon appetit, everyone. <laughs> Here's Richard from Ireland with the Smithix. <laughs> No, I do. I still have my beer, which I have to add as well. Tell us about your beer, Richard. Richard, that was so fantastic. Let her know that the next time we're down, she can count on the fact Rosalind and I were down for a visit. And oh, what a stellar deal. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's really good, actually. Really good. And she did say that I owe her something. Um, you know, I have to cook her something for Christmas this year. So, <laughs> so I got Hell's Bay and... Um, this is an IPA. This is made locally here in Liverpool and it's sold around the province. So it's, it's obviously quite good. I've had it there. Me and Roz have had a few of these sit down on the patio, which was kind of nice. You'll notice how I pour it uh, directly in. This is something I learned to do in Germany. It gets rid of the gas and I pour it directly in rather than, you know, tilt it so that um, it pours more smoothly. I actually pour it directly in and let it sit. It's going to take about three or four minutes to be ready, but it'll be less gassy. So that's that's my thing. There. So. Cheers, Richard. A great breakfast. <laughs> Hell's yeah, it's a good breakfast. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you so much, Richard. We really enjoyed that journey. It's really important to us that we share with each one of you it is is what is cooking and where can we go and where are we sourcing our products and and where are we getting inspired and I think it's really really fantastic. The neat thing about both of the breweries at the Tire Shack and at Holy Whale that we were visiting yesterday for Rosalind and I is neither one of them serve food. So actually, they encourage you to go to one of the local restaurants. They have partnerships with nearby restaurants. Tire Shack brings in Black Rabbit and a few other different places to, to try things. Black Rabbit is a restaurant, by the way. <laughs> it sounds funny, a random Black Rabbit coming in. Um, but, and they come in and they, so they, it's really about what we call that fusion food or that supply chain of helping each other out. And it really shows a growth in the tourism sector, which we really get excited. So we're going to talk about just before I'm going to, and I'm going to 
I'm going to go through my turkey one. We're going to go over to Jacqueline and see what's going on with her beef. And I'm going to quickly end on our pumpkin one. Those oranges are still caramelizing in the oven. So out of the spirit of the shells in the package, you're not going to see a difference. But guess what? This is zucchini. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is the zucchini crust, same way as the other one. Um, so it's got that great base. And I want to say thank you. It was Rosalind Miller that introduced me to these. And I owe you that one for that one, my very good friend. So again, the perfect bite has everything on the fork. We all have meals where we chase it around the plate. So we really get that great plate. I can tell you, I've had a lot of perfect meals at Jacqueline's house with these noodle bowls she's been making me and I get a lot of perfect bites. Thank you for that, Jacqueline. So a traditional turkey dinner in Atlantic Canada, usually we can still just check on those oranges, usually would consist of mashed potatoes. So first of all, what should it consist of? Let me get this right, everybody. It should consist of a beautiful roasted turkey. So I roasted this yesterday on our smoker. Um, I've got it back absolutely wonderful. So it was roasted on the smoker. So it took about seven hours at a very low temperature. It tasted, it's, I could smell the smoke off it in front of me. Also, if we really want to know, of course I use some because the other side of it's cut. <laughs> so I kept a display side for all of you today to see what, how beautiful that roast turkey is. So one of the things I do is I do set a couple of those sausages around it. So the sausages were actually all on top of the turkey when it cooked, add some flavor to the meat, add some flavor to the gravy. So those are the turkey sausages that went on the breakfast pizza. Wonderful. So I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, so mom was just checking in part of the other things already. So what I've done, and of course out of that, my one of my favorite way to make the drippings is this. Before I roast the, tur the chicken or the turkey on the bottom, I put long slices of celery, like very long like this, because they're only gonna be there for flavor. They're gonna get thrown out later. Note that. Then I put onions, all cut up in strings because I'm gonna keep those in. Carrots that I cut up into little sticks, like carrot sticks you would munch on. Those are gonna be staying in. I coat the bottom of the pan with some beautiful summer savory. Thank you, Angela. This is fresh organic summer savory grown here locally. And then of course my favorite herb, fresh thyme, which I've got over here. So I layer all that in the bottom of the pan with four or five cloves of garlic, to be honest with you. And then I set the, thank you mom. Then I set the turkey on top and that's how I roast it. So I put about two cups of water in the bottom, that roast to the bottom. When it's all done cooking, the only thing I throw out is the celery because the celery doesn't grind up well. There's a reason to that. So everything else stays in the pan. And then Maureen, I think you said it, and it gets ground up and there's your gravy. So mm -hmm. my gravy has no dairy, no flour, no anything in it because the thickness, those are looking good, from the, from the carrots and the onions actually give the gravy some thickness. So that is a beautiful gravy recipe. We'll make sure that that's posted up. So what I have in here, I have mashed potatoes and gravy that I have now mixed together that I'm gonna use as the base for my pizza on the zucchini crust. So I'm starting with vegetables. I'm gonna put some potatoes and gravy, which who doesn't like, I know growing up, my, this is probably what the mashed potatoes and gravy look like on my plate. I would put so much gravy on my plate. But if you'll notice the consistency, it's very similar to the ricotta cheese consistency in, that, in, the, in the first recipe. So and it's very much like the other one. Thanks, mom. As you'll see, I'm going to layer all of that beautiful mashed potato and gravy along the whole. So that's like my sauce. I didn't want to use just gravy. I am going to sprinkle a little extra gravy on here in a second. But that creates a beautiful pasty layer across the whole bottom. And let me get that all spread around and look at that. So I've got a nice layer of potato, mashed potatoes and gravy that are going on that. So hopefully it was a favorite recipe. So oftentimes when you make a traditional pizza, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of extra gravy around that as you see, cut it on my gravy pot here. So there's a little extra 
zing and spice in there. So just like building a pizza, I'm gonna do in here is I've got a little bit of fresh leeks that I'm putting on the bottom because I wanted a little bit of that freshness in there. And another traditional ingredient that you're gonna have here in Atlantic Canada with your turkey dinner, it's gonna be turkey, right? So there's the beautiful roasted turkey. I don't know if you can see the pinkness from the smoker where that is smoked. There's actually a really, really big pink layer, but I have cubed it all up so it's nice and small. I'm gonna put this down. So I'm gonna put layer a whole layer of turkey all across the top of this. So again, it's sort of like you would do it in a different other type of pizza topping. There's a big straight big piece. I might have to eat that piece. It's a little, oh, I think my mother's gonna go in for it. She's gonna eat it. So I have those beautiful carrots that I got yesterday at the farmer's market from Angela at Pretty Farms Fresh Local Harvest. So again, I'm gonna sprinkle those carrots on just like you would sprinkle any topping that you would on a pizza. So I hope everybody's starting to see what's gonna happen here. When you go to bite into this pizza, you're gonna get all of your favorite flavors that you would in your favorite Thanksgiving turkey dinner. Now, I would recommend if anybody wants, I looked for Brussels sprouts yesterday and they were sold out. I was so disappointed. Probably everybody else after me that came looking for their Brussels sprouts a little too late. So I really wanted to put a few Brussels sprouts on top of this. I know they're not everybody's favorite, but one of mine. And I also think that the flavor of the Brussels sprout would really add a different nice consistency. <laughs> so you're ready? There's your turkey dinner. So uh, isn't that fantastic, Maureen? I can, I can feel your excitement, Maureen. So I am gonna sprinkle some summer savory across the top of this because I do wanna put a little of extra seasoning. That's a really traditional way. It's not a lot in, a, in Italy. They'll put, the, they'll put an extra bit of the summer savory seasoning across the top of the pizza. And usually it's not summer savory, right? You're getting probably some dried oregano and some Italian spices. So a nice bit of the seasoning across the top. And because it is pizza and we want a bit of cheese, I chose a very, very finely grated Parmesan because the saltiness and the Parmesan, and it's not an over cheesy flavor. It's got a little bit more of that earthy flavor to it. It pairs really well with the turkey and, the, and uh, all the ingredients that are on it. I'm just putting a thin layer because we don't need a lot. And happy Thanksgiving. Wonderful. Who likes cranberry sauce? So one of the toppings, usually when I serve this, I serve it with the cranberry sauce hot. So when you get your pizza out, I'll drizzle some of the cranberry sauce on top of it. But I am in, and I'll post the recipe and we'll see if we have enough time at the end. I'll walk through the recipe for this cranberry sauce. But um, fresh local cranberries grown all over Atlantic Canada. So Jacqueline, I hope we get a chance to go visit a cranberry bog. I have never done that. Angela, if you're on there, I bet you, you know some. We should make a road trip and go visit a cranberry bog. I'm gonna put a little bit of this before I bake it. I'm not gonna bake this one till this afternoon, but I promise we'll be sharing pictures. It's another way that I'm able to share Thanksgiving dinner with some friends. I can make a nice Thanksgiving and deliver some pizza to friends. So thank you everybody. So Jacqueline, let's go over to you and check out your beef pizza. And at the very end, we're gonna end with a, the last two minutes of our pumpkin pizza. Over to you, my friend. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you again. And this is my breakfast. <laughs> Traditional one. Okay, and uh, I'll add. Let me try. Let me uh, take, taste it. Okay, this is the sauce from Scott's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. Mm. delicious. Delicious, yeah. I'm so excited because this is the first time I experienced the ingredients from Atlantic Canada. Um, for the, for the piece of ba the base, 
I use this kind of bread. Mm -hmm. The same, uh, the same as uh, Rosaline used. Yeah. And for the topping, I have made beef. I cooked beef mm -hmm. before. So now I'd like to share with you uh, the way to to uh, to make the, the beef here. Uh, first of all, we chop garlic and uh, cut onions into small pieces. And after that, uh, we heat the olive oil and saute the onions and garlic. Then we add the ground beef and I use uh, a pound about 450 grams. And then I added salsa sauce. I used two tablespoons of salsa sauce. And after that, I add one tablespoon of cornstarch. Then I, uh, I added a little bit salt to adjust the taste. And um, the total time to cook the beef is about five minutes. Okay, so uh, that is about the beef. And uh, uh, I did as uh, Scott uh, suggested, I put the bread into the uh, air fryer for about four to five minutes. Then, I spread the salsa sauce on it. And a little bit of ketchup. Okay, I use this kind of cheese, uh, mozzarella cheese. Yes, <coughs> and then beef. And green pepper. Ah, by the way, thank you, Michelle. This is the, the pepper from your garden. Scott's brother, Les, gave you that plant. So that was, a, it, that plant grew three peppers. Yeah. And uh, the sausage. I use this kind of sausage. Nice. Pepperoni, okay. And again, some cheese on the top. Very good. And uh, we preheat the oven for about 10 minutes with 200 degrees centigrade, centigrade and uh, we bake it for about 15 minutes. Good. Bravo. Yeah. 
and this is our breakfast. Very they look good. absolutely Thank perfect, Jacqueline. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving Day to everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving. And I know her son serenaded us with a song when we were coming in. So maybe he'll come back with his guitar as we wrap up. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna go into my recipe here, Jacqueline, and you just let me wrap up this something and play the guitar. Hey, food. Hold up. He was singing a song earlier. So Jacqueline, we're going to come back around. I'm just going to wrap up this and we'll end on his song, okay? So let me show you. So I'm going to use a cauliflower crust again for our dessert pizza. One of the things I'm going to do with that is I wanted to make sure that this is, I'm going to brush it where I've lost my brush again with a little bit of maple syrup on the bottom. And um, I think I lost my piece of that. So we'll come back over here. Um, there we go. So, and we'll get the maple syrup piece out here. So we're gonna brush, I need the maple syrup back. We got the brush, but no maple syrup. So, and I think my mother was helping me put everything away and all my maple syrup's been put away. Can you imagine? Normally oh, yeah. I would have lots of maple syrup and we can't find a jar of it. All right. So I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of maple syrup on the bottom of this. Talk about the best looking pizza ever, right? Starting with maple syrup across the bottom. Because this is a traditionally savory crust and I'm using a crust that's pre-done. The last time I did this, I used some crusts that I had, uh, that were made out of a, a flax or a buckwheat flour. I didn't have any today. So this is a start. This is a beautiful puree that we talked about earlier. And I'm gonna let you see the wonderful thickness of that. So that's the pumpkin puree. We'll make sure that that recipe goes out to everybody. Yes. And um, so you're going to see this go across. It's And I put a little bit of a thickener in this so that it's going to hold its shape. And wait till you see how beautiful. There. So we want this thick and all the way over to the edges of the different ones. So this is, and I have to say, it smells so fantastic. And it's very smooth. And I want to remind everybody because I really use those baby, the younger pumpkins. So, because pumpkins sometimes can be a bit grainy. Put that back in for another minute. So here I'm going to, so I've got some crushed walnuts. So I'm going to crush, I'm just going to put some crushed walnuts across the top of this. There's very little, because the pumpkin pie filling and everything in itself already tastes delicious. Mm. So a little bit of sprinkled walnut across it. My mother's, one of my mother's favorite things is coconut. I believe there's some coconut over here. We're gonna sprinkle that on the top. Kind of acts like the cheese. So are you ready? There's all the oranges. Yeah. And watch how they come off. Yes. They come off nicely caramelized and that's on there. And you'll be able to see what that looks like. Mm. So yeah, Maureen, I'm gonna say something right now. Every time you're talking, the swing's going over to you. And I'm not mm -hmm. entirely sure, but I don't think that's going to end up recording correctly right now. Mm. I'm having a little bit of challenge on my screen. So I'm just going to put you on mute, Maury. I apologize for that. So mm -hmm. these are coming over. And as you see, look how caramelized this came out. So that just simply was the oranges with the maple syrup on one side. So these, that does not go on yet. So anyhow, we're, we're going to use our coconut as our topping. But mom just put it down on the bottom one. So we're gonna put these on here. And again, I hope what you're gonna see is how beautifully these come out. And I use two oranges. They seem to work out perfectly on a 12 inch pizza pie, I might add. Um, I did do a sampling and ate two of them. So on average, they fit that way. So there you go, everybody. There is your dessert pizza, completely wrapped up with your pumpkin, your chicory chai and pumpkin filling, topped off with your caramelized oranges with a few nuts and a little bit of sprinkled coconut just to put a little bit of extra joy on top of that. So we are gonna bake that in the oven. It's gonna bake about 350. So it needs, it, well, we're gonna say low and slow for about 30 minutes, but we're gonna bake that because we're gonna have that 
with our turkey dinner and our Thanksgiving dinner tonight. So hopefully from our kitchens to yours, you've enjoyed our Thanksgiving festivities. I'll tell you, we will be enjoying that with a Wickerman pumpkin spiced beer. Thank you from the tire shack. And then Holy Whale, I know for the October fresh, fresh amber ale, gonna be a great one that they had also recommended to go with our Thanksgiving dinner. So we really just wanna say thank you to these guys that have, have um, really stepped up to be part of the local food community and really wanting to talk to each and every one of you to say, what are we cooking, eating and drinking here in Atlantic Canada? So if anybody has any questions, please do. We'll get Jacqueline's son to come in. It was really beautiful because we were on a little bit earlier. He came in and, and I think it was Maureen, mom and I, and we were serenaded and it was a really, really great piece. Roslyn's pizza is coming out of the oven and we've got our breakfast pizza coming out the moment I are going to sit down and eat. So we'll let you go on with your song for a second here. Roslyn, let's see yours. I have the, I cut it so you can see it a little bit. So there's the shrimp. The other hot sausage and the chicken tomato pesto. Thank you. Looks perfect. And there is our breakfast pizza. Bravo. We're about to go and enjoy. Here we go. So over to you in Mahone Bay, Nova Scotia. Wise men say only fool rushing. And you know what's funny? My shirt says today, Oh Canada, where your dreams come true. It is. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. Next week is a vegetarian week. We're really excited about some of the fantastic recipes you're going to see coming up for all vegetable based. So Maureen, kisses and hugs. Happy Thanksgiving. We're so sorry you can't be here in Canada, but we're going to dedicate next week's episode to you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.